live? I always do that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your host, Josh A.K. Jam Moore, and welcome to another installment of Jam Moore Interviews. I'm your... I'm all over the place, y'all. It's a great stream today. I have an amazing guest with me today. He's the voice of Star-Lord and Square Enix's 2021 Guardians of the Galaxy video game, and I'm so excited to be talking to him. He's immensely talented. He's humble. He's awesome. He's rocking. He's kicking. Can I please get a rounding rise of applause for the amazing, the talented John McLaren? Lauren, did I say that right? He's going to correct me. Don't worry about it. There we go. <laughs> hey, what's up, brother? Hey, hold on. My settings always want to mess with me. Hold on. Let me. Let me see. How you doing? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Why is it not? Hold on. Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know what's wrong with my computer. It's acting weird today. Okay. All Technology, right, we're good. man. Technology. I know, right? Because sometimes it wants to work, and then the next time it doesn't. All right. <laughs> so sorry if I'm a little discombobulated. That's all guys. good, man. You nailed you nailed the name, by the way. Thank God, Jesus! I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I I aren't, was so scared. Aren't names the most terrifying thing? Yes, Jesus. It's like one thing I'm learning. It's like. I stream every now and then on Twitch and it's like people coming in all the time and it's, they've got all sorts of crazy names or Twitch names. And I'm like, I hope that I am pronouncing this properly and not offending anyone. Right. Jesus. Well, before I get started and ask my questions, I just like to say how much of an honor and humbling uh, experience it is to be getting able to talk to you. I hope you like the background. I oh, made dude. For you. oh, dude. I saw, I know I was sitting here in the waiting room. And I was like, Dude, this guy put some work into this. This looks good. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I really wanted to make it all out. So thank you so much. And I really hope to make an amazing experience for you while you're here, while I have you here. So thank you so much for joining and thank you for saying thank, yes. Thank you for having me, brother. Absolutely. So before I ask my questions, and of course I have mine, you know, I always ask my guests, you know, more recently, you know, what's on their mind? What are they thinking about? Because, you know, obviously I have my questions, but you never really ask the interviewee, what are they thinking? What's on their mind? So, John, the first question for me, for you today mm -hmm. is, what's on your mind? Is there anything you want to talk about? Something you want to recommend? Did you eat something? Did you just take a really great nap? You can talk about anything at all. The floor is yours. Uh, bed, oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> No, I had a I had a pretty crazy day today. It was it was a very uh, busy day. I've I have not eaten yet since you brought that up. <laughs> what? I've just been go 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 go. No, I, no, I'm I'm good though, man. It's uh, I'm just happy to be here. I was waiting for that hat. I've seen some of your interviews. I'm like, where's the hat, man? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to bust out the hat. I, 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 this has kind of been a trademark. No, it's funny. This hat was never supposed to be like a trademark thing. I got this hat for like my senior photos for last year. Love it. Because I was graduating and people were like, I love the hat. I was like, okay, I guess. So I started wearing it more. I also, it. I don't like haircuts. So this is a great little, you know, disguise. So <laughs> Dude, that's with, why I wear it. with COVID the last couple of years, you must have been wearing that a lot. No haircuts, everything shut down. <laughs> Oh man, I knew I know at one point I was looking I was looking like my dog. I was I was just like boof. <laughs> I felt that yeah, this, this I can't believe we're still we're almost three years into this, man. This is I know, man. That's that's actually what's on my man. I, I hope that's what's on my mind. I hope everything I hope everybody everywhere is doing all right because I where I am, we just went back into lockdown again. So it's been uh it's been uh it's it's been fun. <laughs> Heavy sarcasm. You're in Canada, right? I'm in Canada, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's a where um bunch of places up here that just at. went back into lockdown. Ah, uh, I know it must be difficult to to have to constantly toggle in and out, in and out with that stuff. Yeah. It must be a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're all in it together, right? So. I hope. I mean, a little less, a little less now. Some places are open, some are not, but 
Right, right, right. Um, sorry, I don't want to. Uh, I want to keep the flow going, but I just want to make sure I sound good. So if you give me a second, yes, of course, um, brother. I'm gonna plug in my headphones to just make sure the audio is going good. Um, on on the stream, I don't want people to listen and they're like, "Man, you sound like garbage." Like I feel like shit. I mean, I can <laughs> I can hear you fine, but I don't know. I don't have a baseline for what your your setup normally sounds like. So what the heck? Okay, hold on. Give me one second. Okay. What kind of what kind of setup are you rocking? What what microphone you got? Um, you have better than me. Hold on. Is this it? Hold on. This oh, one... there we heard a shift. Okay. Ah, I can't. Okay. Hold on. I think I got it. Say something. Yeah, you did. You did. Sounds better. Damn. Okay. Hold on. I'm embarrassed now. My head. Oh, no, man. <laughs> okay. Look at this guy. How many hats you got back there? <laughs> you want to? You really want to see? Hold on. I do want to see. I'm a hat guy, so. That's right there. Oh, my man. All of those. Then there's some signatures on the wall. Oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. If you I ever have, do extremely, uh, you got to let me I gotta know. I got to buy another. I had a, I had a New York hat. Because I love my New York? York hat, but it's it's run its course. It's my girl hates it because it's just so <laughs> ratty. <laughs> you ever been to New York? Uh, I have, yeah, yeah, a couple times. I lived there. I'm from Queens. Oh, nice. Yeah, I moved Very to nice. Georgia in 20. Been living here for about seven years now. Yeah, seven. Sorry, sorry, where are you now? Georgia. Oh, cool. Right on live in georgia now um i kind of miss new york because everything in new york is just i'm sorry i don't mean to make it about me but i was just saying you know it, it just like from new york is just so different from georgia because like where i used to live yeah. there was a corner store and right next to the corner store there was a chinese foods place there was a mm. subway a mcdonald mm. like what like i could just walk to those places i can't do that here now it's yeah a little more spread spread out yeah, like you need like a bike or a car. Or yeah. just, but anyways, let's go back <laughs> to you. Um, <laughs> so my first question to you is, how would you say your childhood has helped fuel your passion as an artist? Uh, my childhood? I mean, I was very fortunate to um, grow up in a family that, you know, really encouraged me to try a lot of things, do a lot of things. Um, I'm very fortunate to have... Uh, parents that have been, you know, always supportive with me, you know, following, you know, this crazy dream of, <laughs> of, of acting, <laughs> even though, you know, for a long time it was, um, you know, I, acting and, and entertainment in general, any artistic endeavor is not an easy, um, it's not an easy thing to break into. It's not an easy thing to do. As you know, I mean, you're doing your thing with your channel, man. I got a lot of respect for you for doing that because, you know, oh, brother, like any, anything that kind of goes out of the, the norm of, you know, those, you know, the nine to five jobs. And there's not that there's anything wrong with a nine to five job. Like it's absolutely not, you know, um, but anything that kind of goes outside of that, it's, it's, it can be a bit of a, a bit of a struggle. And, um, luckily for me, uh, you know, my parents, my family, um, friends, they were all very supportive, uh, of me and I didn't really break into, I didn't really pursue acting until I was probably, probably 14 or 15 years old. Um, so I wasn't like a child actor or anything like that, even though at that age, you're pretty young, but, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I got to say thank you and and shout out my family for, you know, being super supportive and, you know, always having my back even to this day. I mean, even now, like it's entertainment's not easy, man. It's, 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 it's really not, it doesn't matter where or when you start. It's, it's always a, an uphill battle. So. Oh, I can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, what the, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> i'm such a mess i am no, it's so good, sorry man. <laughs> it's all good we all do it we all do it yeah but, <laughs> as i was saying um, like i've streamed sometimes and like i'll forget to change the scene that i'm on and then i'm playing a game but it's just my big 
big fat floating head and everyone's like can you switch to the gameplay (laughs) streaming is a difficult beast not gonna lie but um what i was saying is yeah i completely agree um with with the acting thing because i kind of started um when i was little i kind of did like musicals uh for class and i started doing things like that like tab dancing one story i'd like to tell is when at one time i was like really i was sick like I, i think my stomach was upset yeah. And my mom was like, hey, do you want to stay home? I was like, absolutely not. We are Hell going. No. So I went <laughs> to the thing and I tap danced my heart out. And I felt it Good was a for great you, experience. Bro. But, you know, like, and I fell out of it because bullying and kids could be mean. So I kind of fell out of it then. But I got more into it uh, high school because hey, I was just watching so many people do things. Like, originally, like, my Instagram uh, was not for interviews. Like I did not want to do this. <laughs> it was just yeah. never in the deck of cards. Um, I never could have imagined myself doing voice acting or acting. I wanted to make it big doing skits. You know, I cool. make tons of skits. If you go back, I, I would do I'd do a bunch of skits. But now I'm just like big into writing my scripts for my short films, helping my friends with their movies, act for other projects. Like I just love doing that, and yeah. it is a difficult battle. You know, it's it's a lot to manage. So well, you know, man, you know, it's 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 uh, it's tough, man, and like to your point on the on the bullies like don't listen to them just keep doing you man honestly like it's it's tough like especially like you know when i was first starting out like you know my family always had my back but it it's true like people think you're crazy people think you're insane they think you're gonna fail they think you're gonna you know fall flat on your face and you know they try to bring you down for whatever reason i don't know why but like it's a thing and i i totally feel you brother but just keep doing it keep doing your channel keep doing your writing keep doing the things that you love and you know rest will eventually fall into place man absolutely most definitely um would you say nowadays that you're a better actor now than when you first started or how would you you had to rank yourself (laughs) how would you say you've changed as an artist or an actor in general Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's like anything, man. Like it's 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 it really is like like anything in life, whether it be, you know, acting is a skill, whether it's, you know, professional sports, you know, whether it's a new job, whether it's anything, you're always going to start at the bottom and you got to work at it and you got to keep working and working and working and while I don't feel I've changed that much because it's me, it's, it's my life. I'm in it. I'm living it every day. Like if, if I go back and I look at myself, you know, from some of the early stuff that I've done, I'm like, get it out, get it out of here. Trust me. I'm the same. And I love, I love everything that I've worked on ever because it's all, it's all a stepping stone, right? Like you're, you can only be present in the moment that you're in and, you know, and it's hard to see sometimes, especially in the arts, you know, how far you've come and it's really easy to get down on yourself, you know, if you're, if you're not necessarily where you want to be at. And I still struggle with that to this day. Like I'm still wanting to, you know, you know, you're, you're always looking for that next, next thing or that next level. But, you know, from where I was when I started to where I am today is, night and day i wasn't doing i wasn't doing video games when i was 15 years old that's for sure right <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah isn't guardians your first game uh not my first uh i've done uh i've done some stuff in um i did like a an e3 thing a long time ago for far cry 3 i did a bunch of uh various voices in far cry 5 a couple years ago uh, a couple other small things uh here and there but as far as uh full uh full performance uh which includes like motion capture facial uh of course of course your voice uh this would be the full my first full full blown i guess full performance endeavor so right that's exciting man and and to for it to be such a part of such a massive franchise that marvel is it must be like blowing your mind still i mean look at all the fan art and and the cosplays and stuff like that that must be incredible to watch to to get it's been I mean, um it's been unreal man it really has been it's uh it's been a dream come true it, it really has i mean since the game launched uh you, i mean you you said it man the fans 
people playing the game, you know, the community, everybody reaching out with such kind words and support and, and love for, for how we all, you know, brought life to the characters and, and the fan art. Oh my God. Like the fan art has been absolutely insane. And, and, you know, thank, thanks to everybody, honestly, who's, who's like reached out and like tagged us and stuff. Cause it's, it, it literally each and every day when I see this stuff online, it makes my day and it, it completely blows my mind how talented people are out there. And I just appreciate all the, all the fan or everything. It's, it's been incredible. It's been mind blowing. I see you share it and I'm just like, wow. Some of these people are like really talented. Like they really know what it's they're unbelievable. doing. Unbelievable. I used to draw when I was a kid. Like I used to like, I used to like take a look at like uh, different either comics or Star Wars books and I, I would have it next to me and I would just, I would sit there and I would go back and forth and just try to like, you know, one-to-one -one recreate what was, you know, in, in the books. And oh, I used to trace. Yeah. I used to trace. Yeah. It wasn't like straight tracing though. Is that what it's called? I, I, yeah, I wouldn't would. be going over top of it. It would be next to me. Oh, okay. No, and it's I not would just kind yeah, of look no, no, at yeah, it yeah, and then yeah, try yeah. to recreate it perfectly and, I wasn't, okay. I wasn't very good, but <laughs> no, because what I, I loved used it. To do, so yeah. I really do appreciate all the artwork that's been coming out, whether it be virtual photography or, or straight up artist drawing. It's it's unreal. Yeah, definitely. I used to trace um, coloring books. I used to have like Spider-Man and Marvel and, and DC and Disney and all that crap. And I and some manga, some Dragon Ball Z. I, I used to do I still have it. Nah, I put those books away, but I used to have a Dragon Ball Z books that I would draw in and trace and try to I love uh, work on. But yeah, I'm not a good drawer at all. I, so I'm, don't ask me for anything. I burned, I burned all my artwork years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a, a journal. Is it still here? I had a journal. Yes, it is. Here it is. Thank God. I didn't even see that door there. I just thought you opened up the wall. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, Harry. Harry Potter stuff going on up in there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I wish, but I used to draw stuff like this uh, in class, and I should be paying attention. Oh, I dude, was not that's paying rad, attention. Man. I love it. I was not paying attention at all um, because I would always draw this in math. I cannot stand math for the life of me, nor can I understand it. So, <laughs> yeah, I was always, I was, I was always good at math. That's what that. That's the funny thing lucky anyway yeah, but... like, the things like like english class and stuff like that i was like nah i know how to speak english i'm good <laughs> reading reading and history is my jam like i just i just nice. love history um love it. but everything else yeah it could it could go to the side but yeah. <laughs> I'm in college right now and sometimes it's a struggle to pay attention because it's just like we're in class and they're lecturing for like two hours or an hour and a half. And yeah. this is just about stuff I, I could not care less about. <laughs> but I, I have to take it because it's college and good grades and education. Go to college. Yay. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's just sometimes it's taking? just um, I'm a history major, but I'm transferring mm -hmm. this year, hopefully. And I'm going to be majoring in film and television so I could get more into that realm of stuff. Uh, good for you, look, man. I, yeah, I love. I Maybe love we'll that. be working together one day. Don't forget about I me. Love no, Don't forget about me when you take off, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I mean, no, definitely. Like, I don't forget anyone. Uh, if like when I do these interviews, I remember almost everyone I've interviewed off the top of my head because it's like I'm so. I truly am grateful for everyone that's allowed me to speak to them and just be in their life for like an hour, hour plus. Because like, I mean, I'm just like a regular kid, so it's just yeah, like man. really. It's really cool when people I want to that. spend time, you know, like like hour plus. And I'm sometimes I'm blown away. Like my last interview, the longest interview I ever did was three hours Ooh. with with voice acting legend Corey Burton. If you know who wow, that is, yeah. he's you know that yeah, he voice yeah. of Count Dooku, Cat yeah. Bane, you know, Ludwig von Drake, all the Yon said he if you play video games or watch cartoons, you've heard Corey Burton's voice. You know before. Him. Yeah, you know yeah, him. you do know him. And he was just so nice and so kind. And like people like you who are just so nice and kind and have a really good energy and spirit. I love these interviews. Like I do love them. Like sometimes I used to um I want to try and do this more, but I originally started off interviewing musicians and sometimes they were just so cold and just so just like oh, ugh, really? like they didn't want to speak and sometimes it's just it's just that bothers me yeah, yeah and 
And um, but voice actors for the most part have just been really nice to me. I mean, they some of them even follow me after. Like, I just really think it's crazy when they follow me. It's like you're interested in my career. Hold on now, yeah, of like course, man. You're, doing, you're doing your thing. You're doing as, your thing. it's really cool. Like, I, so much stuff I have planned that I can't wait to talk about with tons of people and probably show everyone. But um, you know, since you've been doing acting for so long, how would you say yeah. acting has helped you? grow as a person or just grow your understanding of the world at large because acting has the ability to do that uh, like an example i like to use is uh kevin conroy the guy who's in the voice of batman for years now mm. talked about how batman helped him become more emotionally available and more able to speak about his feelings and emotions and that is beautiful yeah. so would you say you've had a similar experience to that yeah i think so i think that's kind of um that's kind of one aspect of, of getting into this, this art form that is acting is, you know, your, your job is to put yourself into other people's shoes. And, and in that you have to have a certain understanding or you have to at least strive to understand, you know, different emotional states. Um, you have to you have to be able to live somebody else's life and walk in somebody else's life. And, and if you haven't necessarily, um, maybe had it, you know, the exact shared experience, um, of the character that you're, you're trying to portray, you have to kind of teach yourself and, and, you know, groom yourself to be able to connect to that experience that you're trying to portray through, through yourself and the experiences that, that, that I've had, you know? So if I haven't shared, you know, a, an exact experience that say you have, I might be able to relate to that using something that I've been through personally and, and connect to it that way. And, and uh, you know, that, that understanding of, of people and human nature, I think it will help anybody, anybody grow as a human being. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing um, that I love to preach about too, is just getting a full understanding of everything and being just more able and available to talk about things. Mm -hmm. I'm just very big on that, you know? So yeah. Yeah, I love I love acting for that. But now let's get into to the 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 thing that everyone's here for. Your boy Star Lord at the top, to the left, everywhere. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. So this isn't crazy. Um, now I'm gonna be honest. When I first heard this game was announced, I was not excited at all. I honestly is extremely critical. Like if you go back on my page, I was immensely cr critical of this game. A lot of people were too. I'm not the only one. Like if you go on Twitter, people were like roasting the way it looked. People were just like not expecting this. But now having played some of the game and just seeing the complete 180 of the response to this game. It's completely warranted, man. Like you do a phenomenal job as Star Lord, bro. Come on, like I, <laughs> I can't. Like you did so good. I honestly, if it's not Chris Pratt, I honestly prefer your version over everyone uh, else. And I'm not just saying. I'm not the type to butter up people. Like when I say something, you, I genuinely do mean that. Because of course, there's been people who have done it before, like. Uh, people have done it for the animated shows and some video games, but I really prefer your version. If it's not Chris Pratt, it has to be you. Like it does. <laughs> like I really, I, it just really Thank fits w what I imagine Star Lord is. And a lot of the other voices, they're good. I mean, they're good. They're they're great. I mean, some of the guys that voice Star Lord are phenomenal talents. Yeah. But just really, you really bring it like to Thank this you. character. Like me <laughs> playing it and. And watching it, and I oh, so good. I love it. Um, you make me you make me blush here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it now because oh, man. I wish I would have pulled out my oh, guardian stuff. But I always like to look for professional, so I don't get to wear like the. They ever have like a Guardians of the Galaxy like shirt, like casual shirt? I wear it one day. When I, I bring one. you on next time. I got man. one somewhere. It's not really? here. It's upstairs, but yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, it's you really did great. Would you say you were a fan of Marvel pre getting on the game? Like, were you a fan? Of the okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent, man. I've I I grew up. I grew up. Um, I read a bit of the comics, but I was kind of past the the golden age, I think, of the comic era. But I have read some of them, and not just Guardians, just you know, all of Marvel, DC, everything. But you know, I grew up, 
I was a massive fan uh, in the 90s of, uh, and they're, they're re-releasing it now, of the X-Men animated series. Let's go. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? I love that right? show. Yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, I was a massive fan of that. Um, that was my favorite. I, I mean, I watched them all, man. Spider-Man, Superman, everything. Like, I watched all that stuff. And then, of course, with the invention of the MCU, um, you know, I, I've, I've watched every single one of those. I think I have one film to catch up on. Um, I've, I watched them all, man. I, I've been such a big fan. It's been such a big part of my life as it has many people. So, you know, um, landing this and now being able to like, you know, be in a, a Marvel project has been, it's been mind blowing, man. I, I'm, I'm forever grateful that, uh, that Ido square and Marvel took a shot on us and, uh, let us be a part of this world. It's unreal. Would you say you were aware of the Guardians of the Galaxy before the MCU movies? Uh, I knew of them. I wasn't. Uh, I I would say I would say I became more well versed in in the Guardians and the lore after the MCU. Um, I think it was one of their properties that really kind of took off with with the MCU. Um, but I absolutely I I I knew of them before for sure. Oh, I know the guys. Really the guys. Know about them, <laughs> right? I mean, you have to kind of now. I mean, you're the main guy. I know of the Guardians of the Galaxy with um, Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Heroes. If you guys have not watched it, yeah, go watch it. It's on Disney Plus. But a great cartoon. But that was the first time I ever got experience to the Guardians of the Galaxy and um, Star Lord and then Rocket. Um, they completely different. I mean, Star Lord was voiced by Master Chief back in the day. The first yeah. time you ever heard Star Lord. <laughs> So um, it's just crazy to see like how much how big of characters they are now. But I mean, the MCU has the ability to do that with a ton of characters. Ant Man. Um, now we're getting Shang Chi, which is big yeah. now, phenomenal. Um, what's another character that was smaller? Uh, maybe you could you could say Captain Marvel, maybe, but she was in a couple like cartoons and, yeah. and stuff back in the day and some TV shows. The thing, but, man, their their portfolio is massive. They have so many characters, right? And there's only so many you can you can touch on at, at any yeah. given time in a single film or, or TV show, right? You can't hit them all. And so I think what the MCU did was really bring a lot of these maybe you know lesser known or less popular characters to light just through con the connecting of, of the the shared universe it absolutely really awesome. it's so great like watching the new spider-man movie which if y'all ain't seen I'm don't spoil it i haven't seen it yet that's the one i haven't seen how have you not gotten spoiled on this dude though? okay i'm telling you right now everybody everybody who's watching this is like what kill john no i uh, dude like i literally had tickets and we shut down again because of COVID. Oh, right. Yes. Right. Right. I'm not. I'm so. Have angry. you not got <laughs> you not gotten spoiled on it at all? Like nothing. No, I have done a really good job of if I even see the color red in a photo on Twitter or Instagram or social media, I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I passed it. Yeah, this is it's, it's definitely a movie that you're going to want to like experience. I wish you could experience it in theaters, though, I man. Can't wait, man. I know. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that like I mean, it's such a big film. I'm hoping that by the time we reopen here, fingers crossed, they say it's supposed to be soon. I'm hoping it's still in theaters because it'll be the first thing I do. I'll go see it right away because that's a definitely. that's a that's a movie you got to see in theaters. You got to experience that full yeah. tilt. Not gonna say anything, but yeah. <laughs> but let's go back to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Which Guardians of the Galaxy movie do you prefer? Do you prefer Guardians of the Galaxy one or Guardians of the Galaxy two? Guardians of the Galaxy three, and I haven't seen it. It's not out yet. <laughs> uh, no, um, probably. I think the first one. I, I always like a good. You know, it's kind of the the origin of them as as pertains to the mcu so probably the first one i think okay you know although right. I, I love i love kurt russell though so he's right you he's know great he was awesome in the second one great villain to, yeah. to he's, make he's somebody i i watched a lot growing up uh, right so on, it's, always, it's always fun to watch him absolutely um which is so cool to have like 
how Guardians has this setting and it, it even translates over to the game. Of course, it's like in a different setting. It's more in like this 80s hair metal type beat, of course, with the Star-Lord van, which was... Yeah. That is so cool, man. Oh, my gosh. Like how I didn't... I was like, I don't think I've heard of this band before. But it's not... It's, it was made for the game. Like this yeah. is all original songs, original lyrics, just people going at it. Uh, who, I forgot who made the... It's uh, it's Steve uh, Steve Shipkowski and uh, Johan Boudreau are Boom. the two uh, the masterminds behind uh, the Star Lord band. They're they've been they've been rockers for a long time, and they poured their heart and soul in it. And it, I mean, it speaks for itself. The music is incredible. So, if Steve Johan, you're watching this. A couple of these for you, man. Well done. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm huge into rock and metal. So just like having yeah. this album for me was just so cool. Cool. Like I love Metallica, Slayer, uh, yeah. like Megadeth, all those bands. So cool. And I just really loved how this feels of the era. Like it doesn't feel like they just slap like, oh, this is in the 80s. And it sounds oh. like something from the early 2000s. Like it feels legitimately like stuck in that era and that time and the way the vocals are the guitar play so good it's i so really big, thought it was yeah they grew up they grew up in that era and i don't i don't want to speak too much for them but like they came up through that era, era of music and they they still rock to this day they still do like live shows like if you look at the very beginning of the game not a spoiler like in in peter's room while he's listening to the music and you flip through the the uh the booklet for the star lord band there's a there's a black and white photo of uh those guys that that's actually them when they were really young yeah what Dude, yeah they're they're in there man that's yeah. so cool yeah i remember i remember being at the studio while we were filming and uh they pulled us aside they're like guys come come check this out what do you think of this song and they put it on we were like what the flark like this is amazing and uh yeah i mean it's it's awesome. This this game has been a dream come true for a lot of people, them included, because they got to they got to make their own album. It's unreal. Which member of the Guardians do you relate to the most? Besides, of course, the main guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh man, this is a tough question. I I tend to lean. It's it's hard because the game really. What what really sticks out with this game <laughs> is is the idea the themes of of you know loss grief and kind of like finding yourself again okay. which all of the characters which all of the characters share and i think that's why the story is so strong and and shout out to uh to mary and the the narrative team uh who crafted this amazing story but it's i think it's so damn good because it's so relatable like they're all dealing with the fact that they've lost people and they're all dealing with you know, the grief of that loss and they're all trying to find themselves again. Um, and it's only through them coming together eventually as a team that they do find each other uh, to pick one. It's, it's man, it's really hard. Um, maybe, maybe Drax or rocket I, again, there's, there's, there's so many similar things. If you, if you, if you bring it down and boil it down to that level of, of grief and loss that, that we all relate to, but um maybe maybe Drax it's it it's really is Josh it's really hard for me to pick maybe Drax because um again I don't want to I don't I, I can't go into spoiler territory and say why I don't want to spoil things but there's some very specific family related things that you know and again it's it's no different than Peter with his mom or, or some of the others with their their families are what they deem to be a family, but um, we've all dealt with that and we've all lost people that are very special to us. So it's, it's hard. Cause I kind of relate to them all in a way, honestly. No, I'm definitely. To, I'm not, try not to cop out. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about it. No, definitely. When you, um, sometimes in the game that I really love is when you pay attention to it and you just slow down for a little bit, you can hear like the team's banter back and forth. And it just really, that's another great detail, like level of detail added to the game that like really makes these characters extremely relatable. And it is hard to pick. I mean, all these characters, you can find something of your personality in each of these members. Yeah. So it is really difficult to pick when you really boil it down. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I'm gonna go with Drax. Um, with that being said, I'll go with Drax. <laughs> I'll let Jason know. <laughs> Love to speak to that man. He's great as Drax. I was really, I was really also worried about like how they were gonna handle these characters because that was another thing uh, criticism I had for the game was I was like really worried about how they were gonna be handled because I wasn't really a fan of what I was looking at from the trailers and stuff. I was like. I guess okay, but when I could, I started playing it and getting into it and seeing how he acted. I was like, "This is perfect. This is exactly what I would want." And that's another thing I love about it. So much to love about this game, God. Um, but I just love how the, it feels so different, but also feels the same. You know what I mean? Like it feels yeah. different, but you can really see the personality traits, the character. It feels the same, but not too different. And I really love that about this game. It's making its own path while also staying true. To, ooh, I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> While also staying true to who these characters are, and I, I love that so much. This is really got to be my favorite Guardians of the Galaxy game so far. I really haven't been another thing. But I'm very critical, if you could tell. I've, <laughs> I haven't been a fan of any, really, any of the Guardians of the Galaxy video games personally. That's just my opinion. Y'all yeah. can love the Telltale ones and stuff like that, but personally. The games don't really hit for me. Um, I mean, of course, they come into the tie-ins and stuff, but a lot of the times, I just don't like them. I just think they're. I w- when it comes to me, I'm just like, I'll just go watch the movies, or I'll read the book, or yeah. I'll just play as Star Lord in uh, Ultimate Alliance Three or yeah. this game here, like or the Lego games. You know, it just. But but this one, this really feels. You y'all had a story to tell, and y'all told it. I'm really glad y'all got to do it, and it feel authentic and not weird and just like out of place and making me just be like Ugh, i don't really you know i really enjoy yeah. this game i haven't finished it yet but i have enjoyed it thoroughly like i've really enjoyed what i've played good, so far good i mean i think it's uh i mean i i I just said it, but again, I got to shout out, you know, the narrative team at Eidos and uh, Mary uh, and her team, what they did with the story was, it was absolutely unreal. And I think that's why the game is part of the reason why the game is, is doing as well as it is because that story is so, just so incredible and you know from an actor's perspective that's you know that's the dream right you get to play in a world that is like expertly and perfectly crafted um so you know thank you thank you mary if you're watching this (laughs) yes thank you to everyone involved everyone involved deserves a pat on the back for making this um do you remember the audition, what the audition called for for Star Lord? Like what it said they wanted or like the age range and stuff like that? Very well, yeah. Um, the funny thing is with like with things uh, uh, like something of this magnitude, a lot of the times or 99.9% of the time they're they're shrouded in, in a lot of mystery and they don't really give you anything. They don't, we didn't know it was Guardians. We weren't told it was Guardians. We weren't even told it was a Marvel thing. It was just... Uh, you're auditioning for this. Here's, uh, you know, three, four, five pages of script. Do the audition and, you know, hope for the best. That being said, even though everything was codenamed, like I think I think Star-Lord's name in the audition was like Commander Jones or something. Like <laughs> it's like something random. And uh, all the other characters had that too, but they're – there was one line that kept being repeated and it was the same three words. You can probably guess the character, but it was, it wasn't, I am Groot. It was celery is good. And it was like, yeah. (laughs) And he was just like, every time this character spoke, it was celery is good. You know, then everyone else would talk celery is good. I'm like, Holy flark. I think this is, I think this is the guardians. This has to be the guardians. You know, and and Drax's character, I can't remember the name of it. It was like uh tough guy. It was literally like tough guy or something. Like <laughs> tough guy. It was always like he's very literal. I'm like, I'm like, this has to be Guardians. It has to be, from what I know <laughs> of the Guardians. And uh and yeah, I just I auditioned and and luckily I got the part. I didn't even have to show up in person. I was very, very lucky. Yeah, I was I was living outside of the city where the auditions were taking place. And so I just had to put myself on tape and send and send the video in. And normally in a normal casting process, you would have to go in probably two, three, sometimes, you know, four or five times and test multiple times before they make a decision. But I I luckily just sent in a tape and 
the, the rest is history. Thank you, Idos. <laughs> Yeah, I hear that with a lot of bigger name games like a Call of Duty or like a Batman, there's just like a ton of like code names and stuff like that. So um that's yeah. This yeah. salary is good. What the what's yeah, that was a terrible especially cover in, up. Especially in video games, it, it is super secretive. So you you oftentimes, most of the time, you don't know what you're auditioning for and you just kind of have to hope for the best because they they also don't give you a lot of like character information either. They don't they don't do a lot sometimes. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but. Right. How'd you create the voice for Star-Lord? Um, repetition, just doing it over and over and over again. And I mean, uh, luckily with Star-Lord, he's, you know, he's not an alien or anything like that. You don't have to do anything like crazy with your voice. Uh, he is, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, an Earth guy. Um, but just, just practice man you just kind of keep doing it over and over and over again and as you're dealing with the script or especially in the audition process like i i'm i'm running the scene like a million times just to get it right and and in doing that you kind of find the voice and for me i, I was saying this the other day to uh, on another chat like for me it's about connecting with the character and what they're going through and and you know knowing and trying to figure out what their past is and you know even though we weren't told during the audition, I made the decision. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to play this like it's guardians of the galaxy. And I'm going to, to play it knowing what I know of Peter Quill's backstory already. I'm just going to go off of that. And luckily it was the right choice. Um, but yeah, for me, you know, doing, going through the process of, of learning who the character is, where they come from, where they want to be, you know, learning their insecurities, all those types of things, eventually that will come out in the voice itself. If, if you've, if you've done your homework, so to speak. Absolutely. Um, it definitely tells, like I said, I really love your voice and there, I mean, I know you've got messages where people are like, you're star Lord to them. Like you're the voice, like that's you, you're the guy. So that must Some, be just incredible. Somebody straight up messaged me one day that like, and it was the sweetest thing. And, and all they said was like, I just want you to know that, for the rest of my life every time i see or read or whatever anything guardians he's like i'm I'm gonna forever hear your voice and i've like <laughs> i like it 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 hit me i was like <laughs> don't cry don't cry don't cry don't cry <laughs> but the fans have been amazing the, yeah, this, the community for the game is just great. I mean, I, I've I've seen them on Twitter and Instagram, and just oh, they they they're great. They're awesome. Yeah, just just love just love them. Um, thank you, fans. <laughs> <laughs> how would you say you? How would you describe the energy on set? Oh man, too much. <laughs> No, honestly, man, it was uh, too much in a good way. We uh, we all very quickly became very close friends. Like, you know, if if you if you can hear it in the game, how tight we are, and like, you know, even just through all all the banter, like you can tell, like, we very very quickly became good good friends. And you know, Kim, who plays Gamora, she she literally lives maybe ten minutes maximum away from me. And we uh, we now are really we even tighter now, but we help each other with like auditions all the time. Alex, who plays Rocket, he lived uh, he he's since moved out of the city. He's moving back though. Um, he he was like again 10, 15 minutes away uh, in the city, and um, uh, Robert and and Jason were in uh, are in Montreal, uh, but they've known each other for years, and you know I I knew Rob prior to the game as well. Uh, and Jason uh, as well, just through uh, through di various different castings for different projects and stuff like that. But honestly, it was like I got I got to give kudos to uh, to Caro, who was our, our our producer and uh, cinematic director Daryl, um, because they had to wrangle us in so many times <laughs> because <laughs> we were just like a bunch of kids in a candy store. We're just like just hopped up all the time and just wired twenty four seven. <laughs> It was it was a blast, man. And you could tell, like I said, through the banter and just 
it it doesn't feel fake. And I'm glad that you guys got to do mocap when we're actually with one another because a lot of the times with the games, voice actors are usually split off and separate and don't really get mm -hmm. to mix and mingle with the cast. It's usually just, you know, shoot your lines, you're done, you know, go home, it's done. Yeah. But like with this or – I'm pretty sure the other games I've done this where the cast is all mocap in there together and you get to bounce off of each other's respective energies. You get to really yeah. build a family and it just really helped boost your performance, it, I would imagine. It makes the biggest difference uh, in the world as an actor to have that. And and you're not wrong. Like a lot of times, um, especially if it's it's voice only, you're kind of just going into the studio one by one at different times and you're never actually really together but with this and and thank you idos for for making this happen uh you know we were doing full mocap and you know especially for those we were always in the room together but even what's awesome is even for the banters like as you're just walking throughout the world and we never stop talking you know, even for stuff that was not mocapped, they had us come in and and do it all together in the same room at the same time and not go into the booth individually, just so that we could keep that dynamic and 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 be there physically together in the room and just feed off each other. And and I mean, again, the end result I think speaks for itself. And you know, it's the, thank you because it that that doesn't happen a lot. Um, that you get to spend that much time with people and actually physically have them there because it makes a world of difference performance-wise, you know, from an acting perspective. Absolutely. Um, would What mechanically about the game, what is, like, your favorite feature about it? Ooh. I mean, I mean telling the Guardians what to do is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, the the systems that they put in place are super intricate. Like, I it took me like it took me a hot minute before I was like, okay, wait, this which button goes where and 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 how how do I how do I do this? And but it's like it's one of those things where if you just give it an amount of time, once you get it, you're just like, pew 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 pew, go here, go there, go there, do this, do that, do that. It's it's a lot of fun, man. It's it's a lot a lot of fun. I mean, you know, you're playing the game right now, but you know that's a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to remember like some of the aha moments I had while playing. They're 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 going. Give me a second. I'll I'll think of one. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, I mean, the second I picked up the game because we didn't see any, we didn't get to play it beforehand at all. It was just we we're coming into it just as any of the fans were. And the second I started running around with, with Peter, I was like, he's got to have like a, like a double jump or something. And then sure enough, I was like, <laughs> <I> was like <laughs> yes! I, I love the, um, the, the guns, the how elemental was, guns. Are yes. Fantastic as well. I don't think they've done that in the movies yet. If I'm correct, they've never really like leaned into that. He has guns that could, do anything like that. that yeah, that's have one of the things, have, yeah, that's one of the things that was like, and this is where the, the kind of the perfect blending of all of the worlds kind of come into place. You're kind of pulling a little bit. That's more maybe from the comic book side of things, right? Versus versus the MCU. Um, but yeah, the elemental guns are are phenomenal. And like I like I like that. What I really loved is that with each elemental gun unlock, there is a a moment of of pressure, a, a moment of, or a struggle that you have to overcome as, as Peter and as the guardians to unlock those guns. So I think, I think that is actually, thank you for bringing that up. I think that's actually a really neat, really neat mechanic that they came up with. Oh, absolutely. I hope they do that in the third one. Cause apparently this is the last uh, guardians MCU movie. I, I don't know. Apparently it's not really. Did. Yeah. So yeah. I hope that they, they do it for the last outing. But, It'll um, be interesting, man. Yeah. And to, to speak about the movies and games, you know, of course, it's a different medium. Different stories can be told. I mean, movies basically are like mostly two hours. Games can be up to like six, 12 hours max, you know. So story wise, what do you like the most about the game in comparison to the movies? Um, I think I think just because uh, by proxy of like basically the the medium of video games and, you know, you're playing a game anywhere from, you know, for ours, it's 15 to 20 hours, depending on, on your level of play. Other games you're given like 
60 hours, 100 hours, too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just by proxy of the medium, I think one of the best things um, with with Guardians of the Galaxy, the game, is the fact that because you have so much time, um, you're afforded the ability to dive deeper into other characters' backstories. You know, like a lot of people know Peter Quill's backstory. A lot of people know that he, you know, lost his mother. Although in our in our Guardians, it's completely different than the films, which is which is incredible as well. And and one of the things um, that was very apparent and and was told to us very early on from day one was that that Marvel and Eidos and Square they they wanted this to be our version of the Guardians. They wanted it to be unique. They didn't want it to be like the movies. They didn't want it to be exactly like the comics. They wanted it to be its own living, breathing story. Uh, and its own universe, if you will. And my favorite thing is just that, like you get to dive in like Peter Quill's uh, backstory. While it's similar, it's a little bit different. And then on top of that, you also get to to really dive into Gamora's backstory, Groot's backstory, Rocket's backstory, uh, Drax's backstory. Like, and and each character is given their moment to shine and share their backstory. And, and and that that is that's my favorite part of the whole game and and I'm I'm very grateful because as Star Lord I got to to share and experience all of their backstories with them as an actor and and I got to experience it all is that's my favorite thing hands down. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Now this there's, there's <laughs> um there I want a sequel. Um, I'm not even done, and I want more of this. I want more of you guys. Like, I just want more. And um, there's tons of things they could do with the Guardians lore, the Guardians history that they could just really dive into. Is there any characters or character you want the Guardians to meet down the line? Um. Oh man. I mean, one thing I do. You know, if, if we're playing off the family dynamic, you know, it might be neat to because, you know, our Guardians is very family oriented. Um, and I know they visit visited upon this in the films, uh, although our backstory is different and I'll leave it at that. But it would be it would be interesting maybe, you know, to see more of the family dynamic, specifically Star Lord's, you know, Star Lord's father, because he's not touched upon in the game and, and maybe um you know, I mean, all of them, any of them would be really neat. We touch upon a lot of things in the game, like Gamora's backstory, Rocket's backstory coming from like that. That stuff to me is really interesting, like seeing where, you know, people come from or characters come from. So it might be neat if, if, and I don't know, <laughs> uh, it might be neat to, to dive deeper into that. I love the Guardians to me. Mm. I think I was watching a clip and I think that you mentioned the name Doctor Strange once in the game. So if they would ever meet like Doctor Strange, really cool. yeah, or, or like the X Men Guardian, I don't think the Guardians have ever. Oh, met if you're here, going like X-Men. outside the the like outside the the yeah outside the Guardians, yeah, universe? like yeah, 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 like oh, they I could throw like a million anymore. Doctor Strange, get him in there, Spider Man, Wolverine. If I had to pick one, get Wolverine in there. That's Wolverine's my jam. I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're, right. And they got that new game coming yeah. soon with Insomniac. So yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah. Or maybe maybe this is a part of, you know, Square Enix also made the new Avengers game. So maybe we get an Avengers crossover and you guys could meet all of them. Is there any voice actor or that you want to meet or work with one day? Oh, I mean, I yeah. I mean, um, Steve Master Chief would be unreal. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like secretly or not so secretly. I'm a, I'm a big gaming nerd. I've played video games my whole life, man. Like, honestly, you know, like that would be really cool. Like uh, someone like uh, Troy Baker, Nolan North, like uh, all these guys who have come up and, you know, made incredible names for them themselves in the industry over, over many, many years. Like I, I still feel like I'm, I'm fresh. So uh, you know, any, any of those guys would be, you know, an honor or anybody who's voiced, a, you know, a character that I watched growing up would be would be an honor. I'm the same here. Maybe one day I could work with you on a game or anyone or, or you know, who I'm knows? Waiting, Josh, but... I'm waiting. <laughs> I am too. Fingers crossed. Get that film TV schooling done. I'm waiting. <laughs> 
traveling all over the I world got, with got that. My phone. I'm, I'm waiting for your call, man. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know what I'm done with all that, man. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just, uh, just being. One thing I look forward to the most, hopefully, when all this COVID stuff has passed, is being able to visit sets or being able to. Yeah. I know everything is like really California based, but you know some of that is changing now. Of course, with how the pandemic is working, just spreading all that out. Yeah. Do you, since you have done a lot of on camera work, of course you. Uh, I didn't know this, but you are on uh, the Titan show for an episode, yeah. which which is crazy. Um, uh, I have my opinions on that too. Not gonna get into that because <laughs> if you, if if you want to know, just go back to the channel. Um, <laughs> <I'll> DM you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, a lot. I have a lot of opinions on that. But do you see voice acting being the future for your career after this incredible experience with Guardians? Do you want to be more involved with voice acting now more than ever? Yeah, I mean, I've always had a love for it. Um, this is actually this has been obviously an incredible opportunity for me, and I would absolutely one hundred percent love to continue doing it. Um, could I pick like voice over film or TV? Not really for me. It's just a matter of, you know, getting a good script that has great characters um, that I would have fun, you know, lending my talent to or lending a voice to. Um, do I absolutely want to continue? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. There's honestly like this. I've said it many times. This dream is a game to come true. And if I can, if I can do it again, whether it be, you know, with Eidos or another production studio or anyone else looking for, you know, some character voices. Holla. <laughs> Is there any Marvel character or shoot any comic book character that you would love to voice one day? Uh, I mean, I'll say it again. Wolverine. I love <laughs> you and Steve Bloom are going to have to get into death. No, I know. I, I'm, already, that, I'm already fighting an uphill battle there. I'm not getting that. Real. That's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Saber two. There we okay. Come hey. on. You know. <laughs> no, any any you know I mean if you're if you're specifically talking Marvel, I mean, you know, there's I'm trying to think of some really interesting characters that uh will be a lot of fun. Moon Knight would be really cool. Ooh. He's pretty cool, although I don't know if oh, I get <laughs> um I'm trying to think. Gambit's really a neat character. He's a lot of fun. They need to do more with him. Jesus. We keep hearing yeah. about this damn movie that keeps getting rumored since what? I know. I know. Oh, I know. We need more to do with Gambit. I love that. You know, or like, honestly, like maybe, maybe uh, I'm trying to think of somebody darker, you know, like a dark character, you know? Ooh. You know. Um, let's see who I could. Maybe the Punisher. I love the Punisher. Oh, maybe. dude. There's so many. The problem is, there's yeah. so many characters, right? It's like oh, you're trying to think of one, and, and some we don't even know about, them. right? Know, like so we don't even know about that they could like do in Punisher a game. Punisher would actually be a lot of fun to play. A lot of fun to play. I can hear it a little bit in your voice. I but can there's the already Punisher. there's already another actor who's iconically the Punisher right now, and I think I that's another uphill battle. <laughs> For myself, you, you talking about like live action, or are you talking about video game? Oh, I was, I was, re I was referring live action. Yeah. Oh, John Bernthal. Yeah. 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 No one's. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're not. I love you, yeah. but no, you're not. You're not doing that one. I love John as Punisher. No one could do that. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he's, he's phenomenal, man. <laughs> oh God. He's phenomenal. I love the Netflix side of things. But now we're gonna transition into the fun part of my interviews called Weird and Wacky. So we have one minute to answer a series of weird and wacky questions. <gasps> no one has gotten to a record of 15 questions, although the current championship title holder is Simon Norfleet with a record of 14 questions answered. Do you think you could beat him out? No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll try. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'm gonna start the timer in three, two. One least favorite dessert. Oh, uh, uh, oh my goodness. Um, uh, uh, pecan pie. Favorite movie. Oh my goodness. Uh, anything MCU. Favorite musician. Ooh, that's tough. I can't answer that, man. That's there's so many. Soundtrack to define your childhood. Sorry. Start soundtrack to define your childhood. Oh, The Lion King. Would you rather be bitten by a dog or stung by a bee? 
Uh, stung by a bee. Would you rather lose all of your teeth or lose all of your fingers? Uh, fingers. Actor you want to work with one day? Oh man, uh, the uh, oh my god, you're, you're killing me, Pacino. Favorite drink? Um, soda water, flavored soda water. Favorite color? Green. How tall are you? Six feet tall. Ah, and time. Ah, John, you got 10 questions. Don't be Come on. Though. The average is eight, but when I bring you on next time, don't worry, you're going to get it. But, John, just thank you so much. Next time I come on, I'm going to know it's coming. <laughs> I'm just going to write a bunch of pre written words out. <laughs> it's not even going to be related to any questions. Yeah, it's like, going to be uh, just a bunch of stuff. Steve, peanut butter, snakes, dinosaurs, <laughs> done. <laughs> Well, I know you have to go do your Twitch thing as of right now. So just thank you so much for joining. But just one last thing before you go. Can I get a shout out in the voice of Star Wars? Oh, of course. Do you have anything specific you want me to say? Just uh, nothing specific here. Just just something like, oh, this was cool to do. Or yes. something Star Lord ish. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody get in here. Keep it locked on my boy Josh and Jan Moore TV. Epic. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining. And, John, you have an amazing rest of your day. I'll be in touch. So uh, I still got stuff to send you. So you're amazing. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I'll see you guys you later. You as well, brother. Peace. Thank you so Y'all go join the stuff. Thank you All for right. having me. Absolutely. Anytime. And